our business interests with China are significantly bigger than our business interests with Taiwan. Wow. Taiwan has the market cornered on semiconductors, mm. but that's not just for the United States. They have the market, they have like 98% of the market share Damn. in semiconductor manufacturing. Who designs the semiconductors? We do. Mm. We have all the IP. They just have the plants. That's why one of the big initiatives in Biden's CHIP Act is to actually bring uh, T TSMC, TMSC, I forget sure. the name of the country, or no I forget idea. the name of the company, the main manufacturer in Taiwan, to actually bring them to the United States. Mm. So they're trying to build manufacturing plants for the Taiwanese company here in the flyover states in the United States so that we can just bring that tool God, this is going to be a fascinating stateside. 10 to 20 year period. Absolutely. You just nailed it right there. It is going to be a fascinating decade to two decades in the future. So that's what I want to focus on. That's what I encourage my clients to focus on. It's not about what happens now or in the next two years. Mm. It's about what are you going to do so that your family, your business, your financial legacy, your individual legacy is safeguarded for what the world could look like 10 to 20 years from now. Mm. The, the world could look like the United States is still the economic and military superpower. It could look like that. So you may not have to change much. But according to economists, by 2033, China will be the economic superpower. That's not far away. If we print money like crazy, then we could not go to zero, but like every other superpower before us, you, you really get knocked for six. It is not a minor thing that happens. Right. And then you lose your ability to print your way out of things, which then you go into austerity. Now you look like England post-World War II, which, hey, England's amazing, mm. but they definitely had some rough years and they're certainly not the global superpower that we are now. But I've sort of always imagined us falling into the number two position where we still maintain some real might, uh, that we have massive influence in other parts of the world, that there will almost certainly be parts like Europe, and look, they're an economic mess, but parts like Europe that are going to be far more aligned, most likely, certainly culturally, with America than they would be with China. And so you get sort of a more like Cold war -y vibe where America's, Russia was a huge player. For anybody that's too young to remember, Russia was a beast when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't know that it was a bit of a paper tiger, but like they really, uh, they mattered on the global stage and I imagine will still matter. I think you're asking yourself the right questions, right? What, knowing that humans are laughably predictable, if, China becomes the next global superpower, what is the laughably predictable thing that would happen next, mm. right? The most predictable outcome is that China would take the number one spot, we would fall to the number two spot. Who's always everyone's target? The guy in the lead. Mm. So right now, the world is unified that the United States is enemy number one. Even if there are allies, we're still enemy number one. You think NATO likes the United States? Mm. No. France and Germany have both come out to say that they don't want the United States in NATO anymore. What? Absolutely. The chancellor of Germany has said he wants Germany to have the largest army in Europe, specifically so that they can't be bossed around anymore by the United States because everybody's oh. over dependent on the United States military. Huh. Right? The president of France early in the invasion with Ukraine shut Biden down and said, you are actually, you are exacerbating this conflict with the rhetoric that you're spitting in Poland and the United mm -hmm. States when you don't even have, the United States isn't even within the firing range of Russia, right? right? So France and Germany have had something to say. Hmm. Biden has been so successful with his policy in, in Poland because Poland has long had history uh, against Russia. So it's a natural, like it's a natural way in. Poland mm -hmm. already hates Russia. And Poland will take any help it can get from anybody in NATO. And so the United States comes in and says, hey, we'll help you, Poland. We'll back you up. And Poland backs the United States up. But Canada and France and Russia and Germany and the UK, they have a very different story there. <laughs>